for the next problems, we're going to put all those together. We're going to do the same thing that we've been doing, but as far as problems 1 through 9, or that's probably 1 through 5, where we did a temperature change, and then we're going to do like problems 6 through, what number are we on? 10, maybe even 13, 14. Um, or actually, I think 12. Anyway, uh, we're gonna do now. We're gonna do a delta H, where there's no phase change. So let's actually go back. And let's look at it. So, um, no, yeah, okay. So if I start off with a block of ice that's at let's say minus 20 degrees Celsius. If I heat it up to zero, then it will stop at zero. If I continue to add heat, the heat will go towards, well, 20 to zero will be MCAT, but then once I get to zero, all the heat that was gonna be used is gonna then go to changing it from ice to liquid. So that will be delta H. And then once we get all the ice melted to a liquid, then the heat's gonna go to raising the temperature of the water. For this next problem, we're going to be given that block of ice at negative 20 degrees Celsius. And we're actually going to go all the way to steam. So let me see if I can draw this for you here. So yeah, yeah, that's probably way off here, just that much. And here, where this is minus 20, that's zero, that's 100, and we're going to go to 20. So let's say that would be 120 really bad drawing right there. Either way, anything right here with the temperature change, this is temperature on this, it's on the y-axis is your temperature. So anything that is gonna have a temperature change, like for instance, negative 20 to, we can't go negative 20 to 120 with ice because ice does not exist above zero. So negative 20 to zero will be temperature change MCAT and that will be for ice. We're gonna use the CP for ice. And then from zero to whatever it takes, we're gonna then use delta H here, and we're gonna use the energy to melt the ice. Once we have the ice melted, then we're gonna go back to MCAT here. And with MCAT, we're gonna now have water, the CP for water, for CP, and then M and then delta G, anyway. We're gonna go from zero to 100 because we're going to heat up the water from zero to 100. Once we get to 100, it will no longer be water because then it will start to boil away or vaporization, which we saw here. So that delta H vaporization will come into play because we're gonna boil the water. And then once we boil the water, boil all the water, then we're gonna heat it up from 100 to 120. So let's see if we can follow along. Um, I'm gonna draw it out for you just to see, show you. So let's say here, zero to 120, we're gonna use MCAT. So, and our mass is 500 grams. And CP is for ice, 2.06 joules per gram per Kelvin. And then Delta T was only 20 degrees Kelvin, and again, Kelvin and Celsius are the same when talking about the difference. Hopefully we remember that, we talked about that before. Okay, so then, now we have ice at zero degrees, but we need to convert ice to water before we can heat it up. So now, we're gonna use uh, M delta H, and our mass is still 500 grams, delta H for fusion. Remember fusion is ice to liquid or liquid to ice. Delta H of fusion is 333.55 joules per gram, right? Um, now we have water, we have liquid water. Then we're gonna have that liquid water and we're going to heat it up 
from zero to 100 because we're, in, we're going all the way across. We're going all the way to 120. So we can't go all the way to 120. We gotta go first go zero to 100 because that steam won't exist until we get to 100. So we gotta heat up the liquid. And again, that's MCAT because we're doing temperature change. The mass is still 500 grams. CP of water is 4.184 joules per gram per Kelvin. And the temperature change is 100K. And running out of room, but now that we heated up the liquid water to 100, we then have to, we have to vaporize the water. We have to get the 500 grams of water to boil away into ice. So again, we're using, we're doing, we're right here and we're doing our M delta H and we got 500 grams and vaporization is two, two, five, seven joules per gram. Still running out of room, getting smaller. But now we have 100 degrees of, or oh, sorry, we have 100 degrees Celsius for steam. We need to raise it up to 120. So we're going to do this part. Again, we're using MCAT. And we still have our 500 grams, our CP of steam now is right here. And that's 2.02 joules per gram per Kelvin. And our temperature change, we went from 100 to 120. And once we add all that up, that will be the energy required to raise the temperature of 500 grams of ice from negative 20 all the way to 120. 